Hey guys, welcome to the Chile Kamanga show. I hope you're good. Uh, first and foremost, you're like, okay, this girl's wearing some lipstick, but she also looks kind of like sweaty and stuff. What had happened was that Johannesburg decided that it was going to be as hot as the core of the earth for no reason. I mean, there may be some reasons. I don't know if it's either because like Miss Essa has decided that she's going to still go to um, particular countries, uh, you know, that are apartheid states and people are pissed and it's heated up the country. Or maybe it's, you know, F.W. de Klerk, because he died and he's angry because people were kind of celebrating his death because he was an apartheid leader. Seems like there's an apartheid theme, theme right here. Yeah, I know. Could be that. Or, or, <laughs> it could be this terrible movie that came out on Friday that has ruined everything. And that's what we're talking about today. Back to back, this is what I do all day. But it beats got it sounding like a Flex. Okay, so yeah, the entrance was dramatic, but it felt right. I felt like there should be some sort of script writing in something about movies. It felt authentic, to be honest with you, and I'm pretty proud of my decision. Now, <laughs> here's the thing, in case you don't know what I'm talking about, you know, if you're a South African, you know about this, this little movie called Happiness is a Four Letter Word. Well, they decided, for some reason, to have a sequel. Now, I'm gonna talk about both movies because for the first time I watched both movies, well, I watched the first one on Friday, and I'll explain why. And then I watched the second one, uh, was this right after, like, so it was back to back, okay, like, I was going in hot. The reason I watched these movies was because my colleagues were like, yo, dog, listen, have you watched this movie? I want to see if you're the target audience. Um, I don't know who it was aimed for. Because apparently, I am the target audience. I'm black, I am female, I am between the ages of 25 and 40 something, I don't remember what it is. Uh, I'm African and I am urban or something. So, I, I <laughs> this movie is for me. Dedicated to moi. And to all my friends out there, it's for you. Um, which is a bit of a broad, broad as you know, target market description. That's too broad. 25 to 40, that's 20 years age gap. Okay, and then modern, but in one, what context? And then black people, but then again, in what context? Because, you know, not all black people want the same kind of content, okay? It's obviously, you know, there's a reason why it was so broad. So they came up with this movie called Happily Ever After, which I'll talk about in the second part. I've not even written down points about what this movie is about because I'm just gonna speak from the freaking heart, okay? This is my opinion. If you think the movie is great, either or, that is completely fine. I personally, you know, have different tastes and different standards for the movies I wanna watch. And, <laughs> no, that's not even to be shady. I just have different types of movies I like to watch. And I don't think this one hit any of the, you know, like the things, it didn't tick anything except maybe the fact that the first one had like one of my favorite actresses and i think i like her more because she reminds me of my lecturer they look similar they have a similar feel they love you know they have this very nice energy towards them and i would definitely love to meet her and i understand why she didn't come for the second movie but let's get into this i am completely using spoilers so if you've never watched the movie um I, and you want to watch it i hope that you go watch it first before watching this but thank you for giving me a free view um <laughs> and if you have watch the movie or you don't really care about it but you want to hear what people think i'm here for you i'm gonna try be as unbiased as i can i don't know anyone personally who worked on the movie so there's no like favoritism or i can't be like oh i mean the sound was great but there's none of that i checked the credits i don't know anybody who worked on this movie so if you worked on this movie and i know you and your credit wasn't there it is what it is um i guess you're probably pissed because that means your name wasn't on <laughs> you know but anyway so happiness is a four letter word it became one of south africa's box office hits because in my opinion they did great advertising around the time um i'm not gonna lie like i i don't remember i think it was like 2016 and people were interested in seeing this film because they did a good job they took people that we you know love or know and whatnot and they put them all on the screen i don't want to pronounce i know everyone's name there's just one lady's name I can't pronounce properly. And I don't want to mess it up because if I ever work with her and I'll be embarrassed. I'm going to be very embarrassed. This is the same time Tell Me Sweet Something or Tell Me Sweet Nothing. What the fuck is that movie called? Tell Me Something um, <laughs> came out and Catching Feelings. No, that was later. That was 2018. There was something else that came out around this time and I can't put my finger on it. And I, I honestly don't know why. Um, but like rom-coms became like a big thing in South Africa all of a sudden, you know, because we kind of stuck to the same kind of content. Before then, it was usually like drama, heavy dramas um, about real life issues that South Africans went through. Of course, there were a lot of other things, but I, guys, I can't talk about the underground. I don't know. Um, this is what I was aware of, right? South Africa also wasn't like producing films like crazy the way it is now, which I'm pretty proud of. And I think, yeah, so Happiness had a 14 million Rand box office uh, sales thingy, whatever. 
which is pretty good especially for a country where it's you know going to the cinema is not our thing especially as black people um because of you know poverty and stuff however i didn't get to watch it because i was a broke student at the time and you know at that point it was like do i spend 30 on a movie or 30 on wine oh you know <laughs> it's kind of a difficult one which one is going to get me by longer and the wine one that is what had happened i didn't watch it at the time and i kind of wish i did because at the time i was in my second year of film i didn't know much and it would have done so much better in my mind if I didn't know what I know now the problem is I know too much now I'm very aware of what it takes to be a proper filmmaker and the movie was just just trash does that mean let's start technically technically happiness is a four-letter word really was lacking I don't know what camera they used I don't know what editing software they used I don't know I don't know I don't know even sound it was weird a lot of it was like ADR for some reason or like you know when the sound is like in your in your face it's like it's kissing you a lot of the time the characters will be speaking and it's in your ear like this in an uncomfortable way this is not porn we do not need to hear things in our ears like that and i know that may sound weird there are particular reasons why sounds are you know in a movie should feel distant in a way so that we don't assume it is real life documentaries are different for example the sound is like rusty a little bit if it's a bit deeper and richer and, and more in the foreground that makes more sense because they want you to feel a connection and empathy with your characters because this is real life we want you to connect with the people we're talking about because these are real people that you could know valid right the problem is happiness was like documentary sound but for a fiction movie that nobody can relate to because them girls were in the spa way too much way too much for the normal south african i'm sorry i don't care how much money you have the music was very western which i don't get because <laughs> if the movie was made in like 2008 fine I'll, I'll, it's not great but i'll give it that i'll be like okay you're made in 2008 and everyone was trying to be america but like 2016 came a time when we we're all getting into a space of embrace yourself so i am very i'm very confused on why they they decided to use a bunch of music that has no relation to like black people in the country that they're promoting it to no, no idea there was some strange tunes there but and i was like okay and then technically the camera was poor i don't even understand and the funny thing is the same camera person who worked on this one worked on the next one so i i'm happy there was growth but hey dog even me i would have done a bit better i don't know and i don't want to just point fingers because i'm very aware that this could have been a directorial issue if you're not directing your access right if you're not checking in well you're, you're also your ad so the directing team if you're not checking in with your sound people and your camera people to make sure everything's okay monitoring everything looking on the monitor and really being like is this quality the best i can do then it's your fault and then you go into editing and you're also there and you just like put everything on and grade it like this or i don't know whatever because i watched this on show max which means they have the best version of this movie and it was trash <laughs> so you know i was confused technically about what was going on but that is not even the worst part about the movie the worst part about the movie is that the story doesn't make sense i don't know if the book is also the same i don't want to come for the author um she was written as you know credited as a screenwriter or story helped with the story i don't know but i do know that i i don't want to even touch that because i don't know what happened there usually what we do and yes i know this may seem like a very like abc kind of thing but it really works for a reason you know it's kind of like the hero's journey and whatnot you have a, a, a protagonist right a protagonist is your hero and your protagonist is going to go through a series of events but there needs to be a reason for why they go th through the events so we see them living their normal life we see what makes them change to go on this journey with us then something halts that you know kind of journey and then they overcome and something good happens or bad depending on what you want to do if you're spicy like that you know what i'm saying this whole method of the hero's journey was just like it was abandoned um gone it ignored if you would it was uh taken and tossed out and thrown away and then put in the rubbish for you know on wednesday and taken to the dump let's just get into what this is about let's start with character one character one is a lawyer now she's going through the typical problem of 
I'm a really successful woman, especially a successful black woman. I'm going up in my career because she literally gets a promotion pretty much five seconds into her, you know, us being introduced to her. And this is great because she's partner and was happy for our character. Now, this is a very big known trope because guess who's next to her? A man who is not figuring his shit out apparently. He likes to hang with the boys and drink beer and he's got a tech company and it's a startup and he's not making that much money because it's a South Africa and we have to keep it here. Here's a baby mama out there and the baby mama is fine she has no significant role but apparently she was a very big reason for the conflict with these two she has a lawyer ex or something i don't know what the fuck he does i think he's a lawyer it wasn't very clear that he was a client until like later on in the movie anyway so but i think he's a lawyer and he's also a client he's a businessman he's successful i don't freaking know he comes through and he's supposed to be the catalyst for why her marriage well her it's her engagement my bad her engagement is going rocky now mind you these two her like character a and her boyfriend are actually doing pretty well for themselves not only do they live in a beautiful house right now but they're also going to get a new house together and it's already being paid for now there's a few payments here and there that are short but it's pretty much like theirs you know what i mean they're gonna have a beautiful wedding um yes his business is not doing that great but they seem pretty fine the kid is such a sweetheart to his um i think her name is nandi yes is such a sweetheart to Nandi that you know I don't see why she's mad about it because yes he has a kid and if you know if you date someone as a kid you're very aware that the kid exists I'm dating someone with a child and I'm not going to be angry <laughs> if, if my boyfriend talks to his kid or like has a baby mama because I've made the choice to be with someone with a kid I can't get mad about that right she for some reason cheated on her husband well her, her fiance but there was nothing that made that happen so it don't make no sense, it don't make no dollars. So she just cheated for fun and then got sad when he found out and got confused and didn't actually necessarily grow and then somehow got back with him and they got married again. I don't understand anything that had happened, right? You got the other character who is a gallery owner or some shit like that who has a very nice house um, and she meets this random dude who looks homeless and she you know she's afraid of commitment she just sleeps around but for some reason with no actual foundation this man makes her change her mind nobody knows what he put in the relationship that added to there's nothing that's like this is the one that's going to change your mind she just decided to commit and then she falls pregnant and he leaves we never knew he was an alcoholic but he's an alcoholic and he ran away after finding out the baby was coming. It didn't make no sense. I don't understand. Then you've got the other character who is married to a really rich man who is always at work because that's how they stay rich. So she's cheating on him and that's about it. He never finds out. She never confronts it. And she breaks up with the other guy and there are no consequences. So yeah, that is a movie that I had watched and uh, everything ends up beautifully, I guess. I can't lie to you. I can't I can't tell you what part of that movie made sense. And here's my problem, right? It's actually quite an easy formula to imitate. These relationships could have made a lot more sense um, if you know it was written well. I think a good director can really take a mediocre script and make it something at least less than mediocre. But it feels like, and I don't know, maybe I can find access to the script just to be spicy and read it. But it feels like, you know, he didn't try. It was so lackluster. It was so confusing. It just made no sense. There were so many lines in the movie that were just, eh. But we move. So now there's nothing that's making an audience member want a second movie. Cause this is not like, cause let's look at rom-coms for real, real quick, real quick. Not many of them have second movies. And if they do, there's a very good reason for why they do. So Best Man and Sex and the City both had sequels and there's a reason why first and foremost sex and the city was a series when it had a movie it was the most exciting thing for fans out there i enjoyed the movie a lot even if it's not that good it still felt like the series but upgraded because it's like now we're grown up we have money you know what i mean we have cameras and we liked it so much we're like actually want to see quickly what else happens with them because you have this history of them from the beginning of season one first movie and they had things where it felt like it carried on and you could still go to the second movie um i can't remember the second movie that well but i do remember it was funny i'm not gonna lie but i haven't watched it recently as someone who's studied filmmaking so i don't know don't don't even come at me but i still think it's feel good enough that it passes the test best man no i really love best man and i love best man holiday and that should make me cry okay <laughs> but there was a reason why you felt that you could have an update because how we left the characters in the early 2000s 
and versus how it was in the early 2010s very different broad character growth there are relationships there that we care about and it's nice to see where they could have gone because they left enough room for that to happen however with happiness is a four letter word you left us with someone who gave birth whatever people do that every day someone who had an okay relationship with her husband even though cheated on him there were no consequences it's fine their relationship is still fine and then someone who got married to the love of their life anyway so we don't really care what else happens because it seems like he just forgave her for no reason we never get to see we never see if they've grown because we don't know we don't know what they used to be actually because it's the same thing that they were at the end so like nothing it gave you nothing there was no reason for a second movie but it came anyway <laughs>